All right. Um, so I've actually made a very quick um, modification to my level here. Let me go ahead and uh, hit P to get rid of that nav mesh uh, green area. Um, I've added just this little platform here. I actually want this to be like an elevator. So if I jump out here and land on this platform, it's gonna take me up to kind of a secret area that I just barely made very, very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how to make um, that. So in order to make something move, um, there's a few different ways of doing this. Um, one of my favorite ways of doing it, or at least the way I feel like I have the most control over it, um, is actually doing a sequence. Uh, which is this little film clapboard icon here. So if I click on that, I can add a level sequence. So I'll click on that. It's going to say, uh, hey, where do you want to save this to? I'm going to go ahead and right click and make a new folder, call it sequences. And it already updates the path to sequences. That's great. And I'm going to make this, uh, I'll call it elevator. Um, you could do moving platforms with this. You could do a door opening with this. Anything that's going to move that you want to keyframe and animate, you can do this uh, with sequences, okay? So I'm going to do just a simple elevator, and I'll save it. And that's going to bring up my sequencer down here, which is great. Um, if you've done animations in, like, Maya, you'll probably know the whole keyframing uh, idea here. Um, but really, this is my animation timeline. It says my animation is playing at a rate of 30 frames per second. That doesn't mean my game is 30 frames per second. That just means if I were to set a keyframe at 30 here, that would be one second of animation, right? If I did it out at 60, that would be two seconds and so on. That's just giving me an idea of the duration, right, based on those frames. So in order to actually get this uh, cylinder that I've made here, um, onto the sequencer, I need to select it, and then I can see it's cylinder number three in my outliner. And if I click and drag that, I can add it to this empty gray area here on my sequencer, and it will create a, a transform track for me, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so again, I clicked on the thing I wanted to move, and then click and drag uh, the reference to it from the outliner here into. Uh, this little area underneath the track button here, and it adds a transform track for me, which is great. Okay, um, if you've not really done too many animations before, um, it's okay. It's a little bit weird. Um, you'll kind of get used to the order you do things in. Pretty much the order you want to do things in is you want to make sure this red pylon is at the time, at the frame you want it to be at first. Okay, so I want it at zero. And then I want to move my elevator. Well, actually, I don't want to move it quite yet. I actually want it to st still be down here. And at frame zero, I want to set a keyframe here at its default location, right? So arguably the most important button on this entire uh, sequencer editor thing is probably the smallest button on the screen here. This little tiny button here is how to add a keyframe. You can also hit enter on the keyboard, but I just think it's funny that that little tiny button is actually the add keyframe button. So I have my thing where I want it to start, my cylinder where I want it to start. I'm at the time that I want it to start, which is zero, zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on that to add a keyframe. Then I'm gonna move my pylon out and maybe I want it to go up, uh, take a couple of seconds to go up. So I'll go out to frame 60. And then I'll move it up, be kind of in line with this uh, bonus platform I have up here with a whole bunch of coins. Okay, and I'll go ahead and set a keyframe. And then if it went out at 60, I want it to come back down at like 120. I'm just kind of evenly spacing this out, right? So I'm moving it to 120, and then I'm actually gonna move this back down and I'll set a keyframe. Now there is an easier way of doing that. I can actually hold down Alt and click and drag this uh, keyframe out to 120. That way I know it's definitely going back to its original spot. Now if I click and drag this red pylon, you can see it's following that track. And that's pretty good. Now I might want to 
uh, have this stop at the top just for a little bit so it doesn't just go up and then straight back down. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and hold down Alt again and I'm gonna move and duplicate this frame and I might just move it, I don't know, maybe 10 frames that way. And then I'm gonna duplicate it again and move it 10 frames that way. And then probably just delete the one in the middle. I don't really need it. So now it's gonna go up a little bit faster than two seconds and then it's gonna stay at the top and then it's gonna come back down. Okay. And then this, uh, this green line is where the animation starts. This red line is where the animation ends. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this red line to 120. Just like that. Okay. So then I'll hit save. And that saves it. And there's a few ways I can have this play. If I come back down here and find that film clapboard, um, that's my sequence. If you can't find it, it might be like inside the, the floor or something. You might just have to look around. If not, remember what you named it and go ahead and look in the world outliner here for that. I called mine elevator, so you could just look for elevator there. But if you have that selected, um, in the details here, there's auto play. So I could just have that play right when I hit begin play up here. Um, and I could have it loop indefinitely. So if I hit play now, I should see that go way up there pretty fast and then come back down. So it's not really stopping at the end here. So I'll, I don't think it's going to work very well for the elevator to be looping indefinitely like that. But you could do that, right? I'm going to go ahead and turn that autoplay off and say don't loop. <clears throat> and instead, I want this to actually start moving when I land on the platform, right? So I'm going to jump to it and then it's going to start moving. So to do that, again, I'm going to come out to my place actors and in my basic uh, section here, the second one in, I can go to where it says trigger box. I can drag out a box trigger and I'll put it on that platform. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I will scale it a little bit so that it takes up more space on this platform. And yeah, I'll try and center it a little bit more. But as long as I overlap with it for the most part when I land on this platform, that will be perfect. And I also just want to make sure I can't overlap it unless I'm on top of the platform. I wouldn't want to overlap it from like the side or from underneath. That wouldn't be very good. So. Something like that, right? That looks pretty good to me. In fact, maybe I'll even move it just slightly this way a little bit. That way, as soon as I land, it should go up instead of while I'm still in the air, right? Okay. Now, part of the reason I'm showing you this is there's actually one last thing I really wanted to show as far as making blueprints that's really important. But also um, doing moving platforms and doing things like this. Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. And really, my knowledge, I'm like one of the only people that does this with the sequencer. Um, and it's kind of nice to have a, a knowledge of the sequencer for some of these things. So um, after you add that box trigger, go ahead and have it selected. And then next to where we added that sequence, there's a, a blueprint one here. If I click on that. I can say open level blueprint. And these are blueprints that are only going to be firing off uh, if some event happens, particularly on this level and only this level, right? So if you had multiple levels and you wanted level one, when you walk through a door, um, it spawns 100 enemies. But then on level two, when you walk through the door, it doesn't. You could have the level blueprint on level one handle that, right? That when you overlap with the trigger box, it's going to spawn a bunch of enemies or spawn a bunch of coins or something like that, right? And let me just double check. If I have that trigger box selected and go to the level blueprint, I can right click and I can create a reference to the trigger box or I can call a function on that trigger box or add an event for the trigger box. I'm going to add an event for it. I'm going to click on that arrow. I'm going to do a collision event, and I'm going to say add on actor begin overlap with the trigger box. Okay. 
Again, if that doesn't show up, make sure that your context sensitive is checked and also make sure that you have the trigger box selected in the level, okay? And then it should show up. Okay, from here, I can go ahead and just cast to my character again. Do other actor into object. Okay, I'm going to minimize this one more time and I'm going to go find my sequence, which is this film clapboard. And now if I have that selected, I can get a reference to this on my level blueprint. So I'll right click, create a reference. And from here, I can drag out play sequence player, I believe is what it's called. Play sequence player. And then I can hook that up. And I might have to add a little bit more to it. I know it's, what was it, like 120 frames or something? So like four seconds. I could say delay four seconds and then say stop sequence player. Um, but I think this should be okay. We'll go ahead and test it out here. So hopefully I can actually jump up there. I've been having a hard time with that. And there I am, my double jump. Oh, didn't quite make it. Let's try one more time. <laughs> I gotta get all those coins, right? Oh no, all right, I might have to move that platform a little bit closer. <laughs> Let's see. You don't really need to see this part. As long as you got your platform moving, you should be good. But I'm gonna go ahead and just move this platform a little bit. Maybe even move it down just slightly. I gotta get these coins, right? There we go. Now I have Explosion Mania. But very cool, right? So that's how you could get moving platforms uh, and fire them off using the level blueprints or have it just play, uh, auto play, and then have it loop indefinitely or something if it was um, something else that you wanted to have moving or bobbing up and down or rotating or a door opening or something like that, right? You can use the sequencer to do that. So there was kind of a little bonus thing for you so you could see level blueprints as well as the sequencer and how to create keyframes and make something move. So. Cool.